Okay, part two of our wet cloth on yoga. And I advise you get part one and listen to it all the way through, both, one and two. Don't go into these studies and say halfway through, a quarter way, oh, I'm not going to listen no more. Because a man will be held accountable. You can't say, oh, I'm going to still do yoga, listening to half this message where the whole message is here for you. And the question is, as part one, can a Christian take part in yoga? And I'm not going to rehab all what he did in part one, but the answer is no. And we're going to continue on part two where we left off. Yoga's sutras, 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 outline a spiritual path of divination and sorcery. The likelihood of such powers may sound interesting. This is a spirit, spiritual snare to entice people to turn their back on the Lord. Look what I can do. Now, definitely communication with the dead is forbidden by the word of God. Divination is sorcery. Though there are Christian magicians out there, it's against the Bible. Sutras 3.16, 3.22, I don't know how they say it, the practitioner can attain special abilities to tell the past and future through meditation. You're in the realm of new age now. Sutras 3.25 and 3.32, through meditation one can discover spirits and communicate with master spirits. Uh-uh. Uh, First John says we're to try the spirits, and it mentions the Antichrist and the spirits that are not of God. Avoid and get away from. Sutras three seventeen to three thirty eight. Many other powers of sorcery can be attained through meditation practice. So, what do you think, Christian? Well, I just came apart part two. I haven't heard part one. Well, isn't this enough to say, no, I don't need it? Sutras or Sutras 3.5. Mastering of meditation lays the groundwork for these powers and leads to what is called absolute knowledge of all that can be perceived. perceived. Isn't that that's what Satan spoke to Eve about in the garden. If you eat that fruit that God said, no, 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 no. You should be as gods. Amazing how Genesis 3 keeps showing up. Sutras 4.1. Supernatural powers. You mean marble? Can also be attained by drugs, mantras, and yoga. There's the drugs. There it is combination of drugs and meditation don't they have those water pipes and smoking and drinking and mantras appealing spirits which the Bible tells us is actually devils by sound yoga raising spirits or devils by movement drugs summoning, sp summoning spirits or devils with altered substances, an unholy trinity. So the goal is to yoke yourself or become one with God, small G-O-D, to obtain knowledge, wisdom, freedom by committed in perfecting the practices outlined in Yoga Sutras, Yoga Sutras 1.1, to 4.34. So in America, parents in San Diego who observe yoga as a clearly Hindu religious practice sued their school district because elementary schools were teaching children yoga as exercise. It's in the public school. They lost their lawsuit 2013 and the appeal in 2015. 
the U.S. court system without the Bible, you know, put your hand in the Bible so help me God, without God, without Jesus Christ, you're not going to make America great, has said no to the lawsuit. You can have yoga in the schools. Americans have bowed or bowed down to yoga into an exercise sacramental, a means of focusing attention and a path to longer life and greater health. That you can give it in taxes and to the medical field. Many Americans try to reject or curtail the spiritual characteristics of yoga by going into it blind and I don't see it. Shut up. Don't tell me. Don't ruin my sin. How dare you upset me by ruining my sin? When Christians exercise yoga, they essentially either deny the truth of what yoga represents or fail to see the flaws between the biblical life and their grip of yoga, and they're not the same. Some Western religious people, the religious history and the meaning of yoga isn't something that fall that foils with the practices itself. It's a foil. It's, it's not according to the Bible. Practicing yoga or asana either has no religious sense to them or it truly improves their Christian faith. Which is it? Does it have a realm of it's not for the Christian to do? Or is it, hey, this is what I should do, even though it has defiled what we've mentioned in the scriptures? The National Center for Law and Policy, NCLP, is a Christian organization that held the San Diego appeal cited previously. The BBC reported that the reason many people, and I quote, in the West think yoga is non-religious is that it falls into a theological blind spot. Dean Boyles, the organization president and chief counsel said, he said that the Protestant Christianity tends to focus on beliefs and words rather than any physical practice or experience. David Paulson talks about Christians appealing in physical actions that are traditionally attended by non-Christian philosophy. He said, he said practices like reflect ideology, I haven't heard that one yet, Reflect all dollars, I guess you reflect yourself, are based in Eastern philosophy. All this thing about your body, your mind, and make yourself healthier and better. The wages of sin is death. He that has the Son, capital S O N, has everlasting life. He that has not the Son, capital S O N, has shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The names are written in the last book of life by the Lamb of God, not God, which take away the sin of the world. That gives you life, not this mess. You be achy bones. Yoga is a pursuit of being one with God. And then he puts, it's stretching wrong. Well, in part one, I said, yeah, you know, when I've been studying all day, I got to get up, flex my leg, you know, I got to you know, yawn, stretch out. But I'm not doing it to no particular God. I'm doing it because my body's getting old. It's getting tired and been in the same position. Position, excuse me. Karate lessons. There's a whole worldwide conveyed in that. Is it wrong to learn techniques of self-defense? No. But when you look at the religious realm, the karate and all those, those Middle Eastern... And all those uh, oriental religion has focused. We've already seen that the method of getting in touch with yourself, the method of breathing and exercising, as with karate and many things, are focused on religion. Christians living in India are also opposed about the ancient exercise. So the ones that are living in India are saying, oh, this is wrong. In a culture where yoga is both spiritually and physically contained, Christians indeed 
are more thoughtful about practicing yoga in their cultural setting. So there are Christians in India that will do the yoga. Some Christians involved in yoga with the Hindu neighbors as a way to present the gospel. So I'll smoke pot to be with the hippies. 1 Corinthians 9, 20 to 22. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law as without the law, be not without the law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might be by all means to save son. some. Paul never sinned. And if Paul was going to whip witness to the hippies, he wouldn't be smoking dope. He wouldn't be involved in the sack. He wouldn't be in that, all that junk. He would go hang out with them and present to them the gospel and get rid of the sin. You also have another thing here, the Christ, the, the Catholic Mass. Which means eating a literal human and body and drinking his blood. That's what Catholic police will tell you. Well, I want to be in favor with my Catholic friends. I want to be in the in crowd with my family. So I partake of the Catholic Mass for them. And you're partaking of a table of devils. As much as a Christian who is partaking of yo yoga. Because the people around me are involved with yoga. So if I told you to jump off the bridge and land head first on the cement below. Are you going to go do it? Oh, that's foolish. If you practice yoga, ASANA, -A -A -A, you may identify some of these mutual poses from classic, I mean, cla from yoga classes. Now we're going to look at some of the, pose, the poses. Number one pose, I don't know if there's any particular order. order. The sun salutation, number one. Let me give you some Bible verses before we look at that. Ezekiel 8, 16. And he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, the door to the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord. They're, they're, they got their backs toward God. With their faces toward east. And they worshiped the sun toward the east. Sunrise service. God says it's an abomination. Oh, I take part in sunrise service. You're abominable. This series opposes the sunrise, the sun, uh, what did I say? Sun divin, uh, I forgot what we're called now. Salutation, the sun salutation. This series opposes is done as loosening up your flesh. I'm excuse me. This series opposes is done as a loosening up or a freshness in yoga. Hmm. Getting your body all warmed up. For the sun, Apollos, it gets the blood flowing and warms the body. The advantage of the sun salutation is to stretch the whole body and prepare you for more stimulating poses if done as a preparation. So the sun one uh, will get you ready for the other gods. Start with the sun, I guess. As a cool down, it aims to calm and focus you, preparing your mind to face the rest of the day. In Hinduism, the sun salutation or the Shurai, S U R Y A, Namskar, is a series of positions designed to greet Sunai, S U R Y A, the Hindu sun god. So, the sun salutation. Hi, sun god. Oh, sun god. Oh, great sun god. Put your left foot in, you shake it all about, and you make the sun god happy. Deuteronomy 4, 19. At least you lift up the eyes of the heavens, and when thou seest the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole heavens. Deuteronomy 17.3 has gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either sun or moon 
or any of the hosts of heaven, which I have not commanded. Ezekiel 8, 16. There is again that sunrise service. The next one. The next pose. Cobra pose. Really? Shall we look at some Bible? Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out in the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Deuteronomy 32, 33. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of ass. Genesis 3, 3, 14. Here we back in Genesis. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above all of every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt shall eat all the days of thy life. This part of the sun's salutation, so cobra pose works with the sun. As you look upward and arc your back with hands planted firmly below the shoulders on a mat with toes gently rest behind. Ouch. You know, they have prayer mats in schools. The other sense behind the pose, also called Bajajagasa, B-H-U-J-A-N-G-A-S-A-N-A, -A -A -A, is the Hindu idea, the spirit snake power, Kandui, that is stimulated and elevated in the body by means of yoga, association with puja deling, P A T A N J A L I, the wise who wrote the yoga stanzas, who is portrayed as a hybrid man snake. According to what they said, the writer of the yoga stanzas is a man snake. I didn't say that. They did. Cobra. I think if you watch a famous karate movie, you'll find Cobra. Number next one. Warrior pose. Warrior one, warrior two, warrior three. Ten little, nine little, eight little warriors. Seven little, six little, five little ones. These are poses, these three, that require balance as you stretch your arms upward. And out and twist the body and throw it. Almost like you know you wave your hands to the Lord. When the high priest, you know, I know you can't see me in SoundCloud, but when he heaved the offerings and he waved the offerings, as with the yoga poses, these require focus and calm breathing. These poses aim to extend the body. Increasing flexibility in the limbs. These poses have an alternative meaning in Hinduism. The poses warrior one, two, and three are also known as Varo Ultra Assassin. That's a V I R A B H A D R A S A N A and represent a legend that a that is about a bloody bloody family feud. And a central character being the deity, deity, God, Varabhara, V-I-R-A-B-H-A-D-R-A, -A -A, an incarnation of Shiva, another false god. See the gods in this? Where the God of the Bible is wrote in his, in his word not to have part? I'm a Christian. I just love. I like it. Yeah, I like it is one of the famous tools that Satan uses in his toolbox. Almost a, almost the famous last words of stupid people. Hey, watch this. Hey, watch me do this. Half spinal twist. Ouch. This half spinal twist pose in yoga is more in between. It's a seated pose. 
with one leg folded, ouch, the other bent, you lean the opposite arm against the thigh and stretch the spine, spine keeps being mentioned, and torso, twisting the shoulders and focusing your glaze behind. Yeah, right. Take two aspirin and call your doctor in the morning and see a, guy, uh, see, um, see a, a chiropractor. Oh this stretch, this stretch is often a cool down in yoga when the body is already warm to maximize this deep stretch. Half spinal twist, also known as the Lord of Fish. Lord of Fish. That's kind of interesting because the Pope's hat, when he looks sideways, looks like a fish. Or Mathiyarachana, or Arthasyanada, M A T S Y E N D R A S A N A is named for the Hindu guru and out-of-date co-founder of Hatha Yoga who learned the secrets of Tantric, T-A-N-T-R-I-C, Yoga and occult arts while in a fish's belly. Now, we did not get in the realm of the Bible there. So they have a fish god. Shall we look at Bible? Judges 16, 23. Then the Lord of Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God. That's a fish God. He's a fish man. We already had a hybrid of a snake and man. That's the cobra. 1 Samuel 5, 2, when the Philistines took the Ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And Dagon fell down before God. In verse, oh yeah, verse 3. And when they of Ashdod rose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth. Before the Ark of the Lord, they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And set his place in hell. 1 Samuel 5, 4. And they rose early in the morning. Behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. All gods will fall down before God. And the head of Dagon and both his palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump spine of Dagon was left to him. 1 Samuel 5, 5. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor any come to Dagon's house to tread upon the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. First Thessalonians, uh, First Samuel 5, 7, excuse me. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon, our God, small g-o-d. First Chronicles 10, 10, And they put his armor in the house of their gods, and fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. Jonah 1.17 Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah 2.1 Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Matthew 12.40 For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Bible. First Thessalonians 5.22 Abstain from all appearance of evil. 1 Corinthians 10.23 All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things are edified not. I can take part in uh, this mess. I can do yoga. I wouldn't want to. But it wouldn't be right for God, and it's evil, and I'm not supposed to look like I'm doing evil. First Samuel 16, 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And remember, 
Remember the first part when we did that? You try to get with your inside and your outside and your outside and your inside. That's God looking. Galatians 5.13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. You want to do it? Only use not your liberty for the occasion to the flesh. Inside, outside, fretching, stretching, breathing. But by love, serve one another. Leviticus 26, 21. And if you walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. So what you're going to do to help improve yourself, God said, I'll bust you. Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren. Mark them that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. This goes against the Bible. So what should I do if I have a Christian who takes part in yoga classes? I leave them alone. As much as I will forsake my family if they want to continue in the Catholic Church, I don't want to have anything to do with it. You shouldn't either. And if you do, repent of your sins. We're not supposed to be taking part in the world and Satan and the sins. Galatians 5.17 For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. There's that spirit and there's that flesh again. They fight each other. Romans 14.21 It is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother is stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. All right, you have heard. Hopefully you've heard part two and part one together. You know in your heart, in your ears, that this is satanic. This is, this is not for a Christian to do. And if you choose to do it, you better not make another Christian stumble by what you're doing in your sin. God will hold you accountable. Because people will look at you and say, if you can do it, so can I. 1 Corinthians 8.13 Wherefore, if meat make my brother to be offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth. At least I make my brother to offend. You say, we're not talking about food. Yeah, but if the practice of yoga is against the Bible, and it's against God, and it makes a fellow Christian take part of these sins, because you have foretaken part of these sins. You're going to stand in guilt for yourself and for all those that are around you. Now the very conclusion is that this is in the realm of small G-O-D-S. This is in the realm of satanic. This is in the realm of devils. This is doing things to your body that God never prescribed us to do. You can do what you want to do. It's a free world. But according to the Bible, this is not nothing you to be dangling in. 